Right, hi, we're back. Um, I've had some fun with this, I'll tell you. Um, right, we're in time, everything's talked up. I had a right nightmare with this. I had this off about four times. As soon as you start to bolt this down, you can't adjust what teeth you have here. Um, so if you one tooth out, you've got to take this off again, move the adjustment, put it all back on, and you're kind of eyeballing it because everything is loose here, and these are raised up, and you can't push them all the way down because obviously the the um, uh, valve springs and stuff like that. So it's a nightmare. I also forgot to put the guides in when I put this on on video, as you saw. Um, so there's probably a few people watching going, you know, knowing what they're doing with these engines, probably laughing along the way. Um, but we make these discoveries and it's all well and good. Um, I'm basically going to run through with you what I have done. Um, it's very late at night, it's uh, quarter to one in the morning. Um, I still got to go to work in the morning. Um, but we are going to persist and carry on with putting some bits and pieces on this engine. So, you know, just simple stuff after I've run through with you what, um, what, what I've been up to this evening. So, I shall show you. How are you? Okay. Uh... I didn't bring my torch, so I'm going to have to put the camera's torch on, if I can. Um, no. Right. Okay. You have to bear with the light. What I've basically done is we have put the guides in. We you put, you know, the the. the the tension side one only holds in with this sort of gudgeon pin here. Um, the timing mark is, bang on, timing mark, bang on, there's a notch there, and there's a notch there. And what I discovered when doing these cams is you've got to leave this off put the cams on in roughly the right position. The way you tell them apart, I don't know if you can see this very well here, the exhaust cam has got a, a groove cut out of this ring here, and the inlet hasn't. Uh, sorry about the light quality people, but that is smooth on the top there whereas the other one has a groove so the grooved one is for exhaust and um the solid one is for the inlet um yeah you line these markings up here um you keep this side of the chain tight as you put this on um roughly line it up and then use a bit of the slack here to roughly line this one up, bolt it all down, and you should have the slack in the chain here. Um, so then, once this is bolted down, 10 newton meters, kind of sequence, go around them twice, three times. Um, this 35 newton meters, so even this isn't that tight. Um, then we have the tensioner to deal with. Now, the tensioner is a little bit different to a car one of how a chain is normally set up and I'll show you because I have got a spare one here from the 5EB engine this one is from. Now as you can see, as you can see here it's pretty solid. Well, it is completely solid. Um, and normally with a car one, you wind this back in a vice and you pin it and put it in and pull the pin out. Um, but that's not the case with this one. What I discovered with this one is if you take this 10 mil nut off, um, oh, sorry, which I will do quickly just for demonstration purposes. 
that's gone. Um, I struggled to find a screwdriver that would fit down there and ended up finding this multi-tool thing which luckily had a flathead screwdriver type ball of ordeal on it that managed to get down in the hole. Now just, I'm not going to try and bother showing you down the camera but if you down in this hole you can see there's a flathead um, that's sort of cut out as it were and if you wind it clockwise to do up, it actually detensions the thing, and then uh, you can pull that out, keeping the tension on it. But as soon as you let it go, it springs back into life um, and does and doesn't return. So basically, what I've done is wound this in so far, um, and then put it in here, and then it was only just. A little bit off so I wound it in a little bit more put the bolts in and I just kept this whole ordeal loose and wound back like that until the bolts were actually home and done up and then I pulled that out and it's gone and tensioned it after that after that I then proceeded to turn the engine over by hand um, four times uh, so it's eight times on the top, uh, four times on the bottom. No, other way around. Eight times on the bottom, four times on the top. Um, and then re-time it up, put your marks back to where they should be, and then double check your marks up here. After you've done that, just as long as everything's in line and all good, double check things. These are tight, these are tight. Yada, yada, yada. You, you don't want anything to come loose or, obviously um, so that's that um, now it's literally a few simple bits and pieces I'm going to put the uh, rotor wheel cover on uh, I've got to put this little 10 mil uh, sort of blocker bolt in this hole here so I can do that while wing this in there like that I'm going to try and get this done at fairly decent speed because obviously the time of night that it is and also I've got to um, sit and watch and play back this whole video uh, before I go to bed tonight. Well, don't worry, I am normally a um, stayer up later anyway, so uh, that's a problem. Right, so um, first things first rocker cover I think because that closes the majority of the engine so uh, I'm just going to go and grab the seals and the gasket for that and um, yeah. we'll do that seals in there. So stupidly threw away. Um, we've got the spark plug seals in there as well. Okay, so just popping this in there into the groove nice and neatly, nice and uniform. Shouldn't have to force anything in. Once it's all lined up, should sit in there quite nice. Should sit in there quite nice. Sorry, I'm mumbling again. It's one o'clock in the morning. Not that that uh, makes a difference normally. Should be able to see the majority of what I'm doing, as it is anyway.
slightly more unconventional way. Try at least. You hold into them half moons a lot easier than it holds into the little groove. Relatively well. Uh, just what this front side decides to do now. Give it a bit of a wiggle. It's got nice only one that sat down, you know, guys. Lovely. So there we go. Now, um, where are the bolts? Because Spaces on them, haven't they? I best, uh, I best continue to use them. I was contemplating using um, some um, coloured bolts, but there is no real point because obviously the engine majority of the engine is covered. Um, but yeah, these bolts have also got a step, like a collar on them, to make sure you don't do them too tight, and they also the seat against the seal of this, so you know, minimize oil leaks. So, we best do it properly. I'd rather it function properly than uh, look pretty, even though I've tried to make it look as pretty as, as possible so far. Um, but then again, who wants to build an engine that's uh, still covered in shit by the time you? Um, have done. You know, you, you turn around to look at your uh, hours of hard work and labour and you see a manky old shitty oily engine still sat there. Okay, yeah, maybe a very functional one, but <clears throat> come on. <clears throat> Such thing as pride in your work. Not a lot of people have it these days. <clears throat> so I've got a frog in my throat by the way, <coughs> that's why I keep coughing. Cool. <coughs> Can't remember which way around the foils go, whether they go like that or like that. <coughs> Going by most of the wiring comes over the front. I'm going to go with like that for now. Let's pop them in. Pop them in there like that. Just keeps shit out of the holes. So it looks a little bit more complete. Bit of crap up there. A bit on the 
shine. Oh. The thing is, I've got one, two, <clears throat> three, four bolts for this. And I put every single bolt in this box. This is the problem I face every single day. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got four bolts, so I'm three bolts missing. Where the fuck have I gone? I put everything in this thing. And yet, no. They're gone. I haven't got any like it in those ones. That, that one. Uh, and yeah, the original cover. bit of a flash, I'm really doing it on my uniform, even though it is dirty anyway, but, uh, I think that one in that, yeah, there's a better one in that, uh, that's the bad, that's the bad, I don't care how much I put it on. No, it's going to stop any potential leak so I don't have to take it apart again. I don't care for someone else to take it apart next time. There's only so many times you get away with that. At some point you get the same car or engine or whatever back. Oh shit, now I've got to clean all that crap off. You put all that crap on there, and it still leaks. And so you've got to take it apart again. And cleaning off fresh sealant is even worse than cleaning off old stuff. It really is. Yeah. Gently just tether that onto there like so. It is still really fresh paint. I only painted it today, so um, I'm not going to knock in it, knocking the dowel in with a hammer or <laughs> anything like that. Um, there is a bracket, the clutch cable bracket that goes on there, uh, but the one I'm using is on the end of my clutch cable, which I'm replacing anyway. So I might as well save that for when it actually needs to be done. Okay. 
put it in the, the same as that one. We should do up them ones first. Um, see how we're at. Match it. Put the one closest to the dowel first. Try and get the dowel to locate a little bit. Which it does. on the other side of it as well, and we'll go the opposite side as far as we can, because there's a suspect bolt there, that might be a longer one needed, because of the bracket, it just seems to drop really far into the hole compared to the other ones, so it might be a long bolt. Sets. Also, if you leave a bolt out where some sealant is setting, once it's set, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get the bolt through um, because obviously the uh, um, dry sealant is in the hole. Uh, right, now just quickly. Uh, you can see how they fit on there, they don't fit on there very well. Uh, yeah. Two more bolts, especially some Spanish ones. What have we got in there? We're running out of clean bolts. Uh, Stainless steel. Long.
to. I really want to because they don't really match the um, housing. Uh, they sort of overlap it a little bit. Makes it look, you know, not factory. Uh, but they work. One final thing before we go tonight is I'm just going to pop these uh, little inlet um, should be what's it called um, Time to call it a night. I think. I'm happy with the progress of today, uh, even though it's taken me quite a while to get that time and sort it out. Um, I'm glad it's it's done. And. Uh, She's looking good, guys. She is looking good. Tomorrow I've just got to uh, deal with uh, the location of these few vacuum pipes. Um, not too worried about that. It's gonna be pretty simple. I have taken like, you know, an Argos catalogue's worth of pictures on this thing. So, um, should be okay. Uh, when you're sealing, um, in an X like this, the same rule applies, use a really, really thin skim of sealant because, you know, you're bolting it down tight onto a flat face, it's going to push most of it out anyway. Um, and what you don't want is massive clumps of it in your intake forks. Um, it upsets the airflow. Um, I wouldn't so much say causes a restriction, I mean that's, that's quite extreme to say that, that it would do that. I mean obviously there will be a restriction, it won't flow as nicely as it did without the lump in there um, but it's going to be such a minuscule amount that you know I don't even know how you'd be able to notice the difference uh, in any way at all um, the main reason being for it is because obviously if one of these lumps was to dislodge um, it's going to go flying into the intake system which you don't want um, Uh, um, also it upsets the flow of air in terms of um, the turbulence and the swell that the port naturally gives the um, gives the airflow. Why well, ports are often done in a sort of motion like this because it allows the air to sort of twist into the into the port, it kind of gives it a bit of turbulence, helps with um, combustion.
So these clever chaps have found out over the years of designing and developing engines. <coughs> So just this quick two minute job of popping these back on. And here a bike. Absolutely hammering it one down the road there. We've got a uh, Bypass about a mile away. And, uh, all I can hear right now is this guy. Going for it. So I remember one of these had it on from the other way. Can't remember now. Um, all right, I shall uh, <coughs> work out which ones go where and which way around. Um, I remember now that three of these Allen key heads were pointing one way, and then one was pointing another way for access reasons. Um, I think it was cylinder one that was upside down uh, oh, I can't remember. right anyway chaps I shall um, carry on with this and once these are on that's all i'm going to do tonight and the next part of the video uh the next video i will be probably putting some pipes and bits and pieces on and then we're going to start to measure the engine mounts um measure against the bike mounts because obviously like i said before the engine is wider than standard so we're going to work out the measurements to uh, chop off of each side and then we're going to uh try and mount it in the bike and work out what we need to do with this mount and any of the others. I have the mount mod for this turning up tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so that will be the next step as far as these are concerned. The engine is built, done, ready to go and try and get it into the bike. Once it's in the bike, it's just a case of um, putting it all back together, getting it running. So I'll see you around and I'll see you next time. See ya.